In my last video, I set off walking on the Camino de Santiago to fulfill my lifelong dream of hiking a full long distance trail. In doing so, I had to temporarily leave a lot of things behind. My partner, my horse, my family, and my home by the sea in Swansea, a place which I couldn't possibly love any more than I do. But in return, I would experience a whole new lifestyle and set of adventures for the month that I spent on the Camino. Though I couldn't help imagining what it would be like beforehand, so many of my expectations turned out to be wrong. And in my first week on the trail, I would come to experience many things that I couldn't have anticipated at all. Good morning. It's like 20 to 8 in the morning. Um, I'm pretty much the last person in this row of beds. <laughs> Um, the hostel is like a giant monastery where there's just like a hundred beds in one room um, and most people got up at like 6am but I had absolutely no trouble staying asleep even though the lights were on and everyone was making noise. Um, now I'm feeling very rested though so ready to go. Today should be m shorter and more downhill so I think it'll be a little bit easier than yesterday. So yeah, looking forward to it. Setting off on my second morning, the simple act of waking early and walking straight out the door back onto the trail felt so new. Despite the numbers of pilgrims staying in Roncesvalles the night before, the paths were quiet and I was so grateful to be out in nature, experiencing the thing I'd dreamed about for so long. My experience of the Camino so far had been a lot more social than I'd expected, and little did I know that it was about to become even more so. So I've been walking with a new friend today, Niels. Um, and we've done 11 kilometers already. It went very quickly, I think. We just had loads to talk about because um, it was just the two of us and we hadn't spoken much the day before. But just now we came to a river and bumped into loads of people, including two of the friends I made on the first day. So we set off again in a big group, which is really nice. It feels really communal. Um, but right now, at this very second, is the first time I've been walking on my own because I had to stop for a pee. The weather is much nicer today. It's a much better temperature than yesterday while still being sunny. So it's like sunny but not too hot. Um, and it looks like the guys ahead have just stopped at a cafe. So I will go and join them now. I walked for a while longer with Niels and Lawrence, one of the two friends I'd met previously on my first night in Saint-Jean. Along the way, we experienced these strange conga lines of caterpillars something which I'd never seen before, but would end up seeing several times throughout the Camino. So we just stopped for a very long break at that, um, that drink spot. Yesterday felt very intense and tiring, and today just feels like, like a holiday. <laughs> so hopefully more days like today. In Zubiri, I had my first experience of arriving somewhere without having booked a bed, and walked straight into the municipal albergue to ask if there was space. I love the feeling of adventure this brought, as if I was a character in a fantasy novel, travelling across the world without a plan. As I was walking in the off-season, we ended up doing this the whole way throughout the Camino. So we've arrived in Zubiri uh, much earlier than we arrived at our destination yesterday, so we got here at like 3pm, which means we've actually had tons of time to just like relax and sit by the river, which is really nice. And I've actually managed to do my washing today, which I didn't yesterday, so I've been wearing dirty underwear all day, which is great. <laughs> Um, but now my clothes will be clean, thank god. And we were walking as a big group for like the last part in the afternoon, which was really nice. Um, to be honest, I kind of thought that everyone walking the Camino would be in their 60s, but in fact it seems like it's people that are either older or like in their 20s. So yeah, there's actually loads of young people and there's like a big group of us that got here and checked into the hostel together and went for like a swim in the river. So yeah, it's been really, really nice. We're just leaving Zubiri, and this is my earliest morning yet, but it's absolutely beautiful. There's amazing mist everywhere, and I'm walking with four friends this morning. Haven't spent a moment alone on the trail, really, only like 30 seconds after I've peed. So this is not at all what I expected when I started. I thought that I would spend the whole time on my own. Today we're doing an even easier day, only about 20 kilometers and very flat, so it should be nice. That third morning on the Camino, it started to feel like I was settling into a new rhythm. Wake up, walk straight outside to amazing views, walk quietly among the peaceful sounds of birds chirping in the trees and babbling rivers all morning, 
before eventually bumping into a bunch of interesting new people to chat to and learn everything about. By the time we'd walked most of the way that day, we were now a group of eight. It almost felt like being on a school trip, the group chattering with excitement as we followed our preset itinerary, oblivious to the lack of authority figures keeping us on the right track. The third day brought us towards Pamplona, another new milestone and a new experience on the Camino. So we're almost at Pamplona now. Uh, we're just on the outskirts. We're in like an adjacent town, but it's already feeling much more like a built-up area. Like we've just been walking through the countryside for three days, and now we're suddenly like surrounded by cars. Um, so I was just saying it's kind of convenient that Pamplona comes three days after the start because then um, you find out what's wrong with your gear or your body in the first three days and you can fix it in the city. So I need to get a new charging cable because my charging cable doesn't work and I've had to borrow someone else's. So yeah, very excited to see what the city's like. So we arrived in Pamplona about an hour and a half ago. I've just been chilling and like reading a bit in the main square. Um, I also managed to get the new cable for my phone. Um, yeah, it's really nice here. Uh, I really like that there's not any cars really in the main city center. It feels calm and peaceful, even though we're in a city. And the hostel's pretty good as well. So I'm just heading back there now for my shower. So we've left behind Pamplona this morning and we're now walking through these like grain fields um, and it's just like flat and these long flat paths through the fields and it's giving me a vision of like what the future on the Camino is. There's going to be all of these like really flat areas with no, no shade from the sun. It's warm but it's not like, I mean I'm still wearing a jacket which I'll probably take off in a minute but it's not like burning hot. Um, but I do think at some point on the Camino it's going to be like 30 degrees and like super long and flat and I'm probably just going to be suffering. Um, I don't know, I really thought that walking in March and April it wouldn't be too hot. But yeah, I'm starting to see that it is going to be hot. And I'm just really, really glad that I didn't come in the peak season because I would not have survived at all. Today we're going about 23 kilometers, I think. Um, and so far I'm walking with two of my friends. We left some others behind and one other is ahead of us. Oh, and I've got my cake. I need to finish this cake this morning so I've been carrying it for like three days. Little did I know that the day was about to heat up, quite a lot in fact, bringing me another first on the Camino. My first day of proper struggle. I lost Niels and Woody about half an hour ago. So I've been walking on my own for literally the first time since I started the Camino. Um, I didn't really mean to lose them. I just like, I stopped to take a video and then I wanted to put some sun cream and stuff and they were already too far ahead to tell them I was stopping. Yeah, I don't know if this is the best bit to walk on my own because it's so warm and sunny and it's a bit difficult for me. Um, but there's a town not too far ahead now so I'll probably catch them up because I'm guessing they're gonna stop. I have to stop for a break. This tree is my best friend. I hope this tree has a long and prosperous life. Look at all this complete lack of shade. And then look. What a good tree. Thankfully, after about 45 minutes walking on my own, I caught up to my friends, giving me just the morale boost I needed. On that note, you can give me a virtual morale boost on my YouTube journey if you click the like and subscribe buttons. And as a bonus, you'll be able to see when I upload the next Camino video. Yay. Look at this lovely, peaceful village. And then what's this? Woody, are you going to commit sexist aggressions against me? I'm going to aggress you. <laughs> After this, we began walking one of my favourite sections so far, though also the most difficult. Climbing the Alto del Perdón, or the Hill of Forgiveness in English, we began to see the most amazing views of the countryside around us. For the first time, our conversation started to die out, and we walked in companionable silence, soaking in the beauty of the nature all around us. We reached our highest point for the, for the day, um, and thank God, 
because going uphill in the sun was such difficult work. Um, Niels, Woody and I had a nice rest at the top and we were all very quiet, I think, having just like an introspective moment, which is kind of weird because I thought that like the whole Camino would be full of introspective thinking and because I've just been socialising most of the time, that hasn't really been the case. We're all walking the same way down together, um, but we're walking slightly separately, I think, because we all started having our own thoughts. <laughs> um, we're over halfway for the day, and yeah, it's all downhill now, so should be good. From here on, we gradually spread out, finally taking our first few hours walking properly alone on the Camino. I found myself thinking about the things that have brought me here, specifically my hunger for adventure and my desire to explore the world, imagining the ways I'd translate the things I'd already learnt on the Camino into my future travels. Before coming here, I'd never travelled abroad on my own before, and I almost couldn't believe how natural it had all felt. From the moment I'd set off on my very first train to come here, I'd already felt at peace, like this was exactly where I was supposed to be. So, I just arrived in a small village um, where there was a bar and a restaurant, so I thought I would uh, check it out to see if any of my friends were there. And Niels and Woody were not there, but others were. So I just sat and chatted to Lawrence for half an hour. Um, there was an old Spanish man who was trying to convince us to take a detour to a church, um, which normally I would kind of be keen for because I don't like missing out. <laughs> I get FOMO, um, but I'm feeling kind of tired. I'm not gonna get to the end of the Camino and think, wow, I wish I went to that one church. <laughs> Um, but Lawrence wanted to go, so we've gone our separate ways, and I'm feeling very much more rested after that. I had some food, and I'm feeling a lot better, but it's super hot now, like even hotter than it was earlier. Um, thankfully I only have about 4.5 kilometers left to go today. We've all kind of separated a bit more today than on any of the previous days, and it's really nice actually. It's nice when you just kind of like walk into somewhere and bump into people you know. lot less hot than it was yesterday like 10 degrees cooler we've been walking in a group all morning we're all chatting um something about the fact that it's like cloudier and more gray i think makes me feel more like social and less like i just want to spend time thinking on my own um i'm not sure if there's some psychological reason for that my legs were super sore in the night like i woke up and i could not get back to sleep because my legs were in so much pain which is kind of strange because I mean I hike quite regularly so I don't know why they're so sore but they feel alright this morning, it was only during the night um, and the other thing is that I have a lot of clothes hanging from my bag today because they didn't dry in the night we had quite a bad evening because we arrived late and we tried to make bean chilli and we made it way too spicy <laughs> so we were all really sad and we ended up getting ready for bed super late and super unhappy so yeah, yesterday did not end the best, but this morning is much better, the weather is nicer for me. And yeah, things are going well. By the fifth morning, we had begun to establish ourselves as a group of four. Niels, Lawrence, Woody and me. Although we had befriended several other fun and interesting people over the last few days, these were the three I found myself walking with most consistently, already feeling familiar with their company after four intense days of interaction. In fact, small talk was already beginning to run out, and conversation was now wildly swinging between the deep and the ridiculous. Uh, we've only got a couple of hours left to go today. It's about lunchtime and we're getting a bit hungry, so I've just got out this baguette from my bag. Um, but we've just been telling each other riddles all morning, and Lawrence is thinking he's going to make like a book of riddles that we've come up with on the Camino. Riddles for the road or something. It's been pretty flat, but we can see some really nice looking hills in the distance. So I'm not sure, I don't think we're going uh, like up to them today, but I don't know if we go closer, maybe tomorrow. So 
So we've just left Estea this morning, which I absolutely loved. I think it's my favorite stop that we've had so far. So that was our fifth night. Well, I guess sixth, because we had a night before we started the first day. And it's my favorite place that we've stayed. It was so lovely. Um, I don't remember if I got any videos, but if I didn't, then I will show some, some pictures of how nice it was. Um, and now we're heading towards one of the most famous stops on the Camino. Um, it's a monastery where they have a fountain that produces wine instead of water. So the others will all be drinking wine from their, from their water bottles this morning. We're heading towards Monte Jura, I think, is the name of this big hill that's in front of us and it's really beautiful. Um, but of course we're not going up there, which is good because I don't think I could <laughs> hike uphill that much this morning. Um, and today is probably our last day of sun for a while. The next few days are forecast to just be loads of rain. So yeah, just enjoying the sun this morning and soon we will be upon the wine fountain. Arriving at the wine fountain felt like another milestone along our journey, being one of the early landmarks infamous among pilgrims. We'd finally reached a point where the Camino felt familiar, where their routine was beginning to look the same each day, and I was walking daily with my three new friends, the conversation taking us to a variety of interesting places. It's pretty nice still, it's not actually too hot, it's quite cold today, even though it's really, really sunny. Yeah, we've just been talking about, like, politics for a while, and then we were talking about romantic experiences um, and then we were talking about peeing and then I needed to pee so that's what I've done already I was starting to think about the first of our bigger milestones which would come tomorrow the end of our first week which brought the arrival of a visiting friend for me in the meantime however we had one more stop to make at the small village of Los Arcos where we were greeted by a host of friendly animals this was one of my favorite places we'd stopped so far small enough that it was only a short walk to the one open restaurant, and the evening sun warming the terrace of the hostel while we relaxed in the late afternoon. Good morning, um, we've left Los Arcos and we're heading off for our longest day so far today. So we're doing about 28, 29 kilometers. Um, it's also going to rain later, so that will be a new experience. I've set off feeling not very happy this morning. Um, I felt really, really ill at like 6 a.m. I was just like in the toilet trying not to throw up. Um, and the weather is really cold. I can't believe that a few days ago it was so hot. It was like 25 degrees and I was sweating and now I'm wearing four layers and I'm cold. Um, I have like my ear warmer on obviously but I put my buff and my gloves at the bottom of my bag still because I've just not been needing stuff like that and I thought it would be crazy to need them but I kind of wish I had them. <laughs> I hope the day improves a bit but we've just had croissants and they were very lovely. So that's the one thing that has brightened my morning slightly as well as the lovely company that I have of course. Of course, not every moment during my whole month on the Camino could be a happy one, and this was my first experience of that. Nevertheless, life on the trail is simple, and stresses are rarer than in daily life, so my mood improved very quickly along with my health as the day wore on. It's really windy, but still no rain, um, and we've walked so far. Like, we just checked and we had done 16 kilometers before 11.30 a.m., which I'm pretty sure I've never done in my life. I'm very excited because my friend is joining us for the next couple of days. Marsha is meeting us in Lagronio, um, so I'm not sure what time she's getting there, but she'll be sleeping with us in the albergue this evening, and then we'll all walk together tomorrow. But um, tomorrow is going to be our longest day again, so even longer than today. So she's joining us for our hardest one. I don't know how well she's going to be prepared for the early morning starts that we're doing and pace and stuff, um, especially given that she's going to have a heavier bag than any of us. So yeah, we'll see, but I'm very excited to see her. Very excited to introduce her to my new friends. And yeah, I'm feeling a lot better now than I felt earlier. So that's good. As we approached Logroño, I had plenty to dwell upon. 
My first week on the Camino was coming to a close, and with it, I had already learned so much, from the albergue etiquette to the unusual behaviour of the caterpillars of northern Spain. I'd already experienced highs and lows, both emotionally and in the daily temperatures, though little did I know that greater highs and lower lows were still to come, in both respects. Arriving in Logroño felt like the end of the first chapter, bringing to a close our first week, ushering us into one of the larger cities along the route. We finished our longest day yay. and our first week, yay! And with it, the arrival of a familiar face. 